Hello, I'm Gavin Ray, the CTO of Digimi. Welcome to a series of videos where we tell you all about our core technologies and show you what's underneath the public face of our applications. I'd like to start by giving you a brief summary of how everything fits together. So first we build apps for iOS and Android and PC and Mac. And our entire business is aimed at allowing people to bring all of their public data that is held in services like their social media, their health, their finance and any other online environment and allow them to bring that data back to their personal cloud storage. And the reason for that is what we provide for them is a very tight linkage between the app that sees and controls their data and the storage that holds all of the data no matter where it comes from. But the real purpose of this is not only to allow users to see and actually control their data's use, it's to actually share it in ways that they can control with third parties. And so how do we do that? We fundamentally built a cloud service that made this happen, but it had to be built on the three rules of the company, which were that we do not see, hold, or touch user data. So we had to do a number of things that were quite different and unusual. And the first was, let's assume this cloud is very secure, but we actually set out to build some very specific security, firewall, and protection environments. And we also set out to make sure that the Digimi app is the root of all security, and it's the master of all cryptography and keys and protection of users' data. Now, the processing that we run here has to be done in a way where we as a business don't see or touch or hold user data. And so what we've used is a modern set of technologies that create processing blocks that run and finish and have no memory, and they can't touch or be touched by other systems. And what we establish is a very powerful link with keys between the user's app and these processing blocks. And then we ask them to do a number of things to allow the user to get access to their data, store it in their cloud service, and then share it with other people. And so effectively, we have a number of sessions that we have to create. And one of the first is that a user must register for their cloud storage to join to their app. And so we support Dropbox and Google Drive and Microsoft Drive together. And we create a process of allowing registration of this storage so the app can always access it. And all we're doing is allowing a joining of those. What we then say to a user is, would you like to add data from an external source? So for instance, if they select adding data from Facebook, Facebook then invokes a very well-defined and independent security protocol that says to a user, separate from Digime, in a separate browser window, Digime is asked for access to your data. They would like to do this so they can save it for you. Do you approve? And if they do, actually Facebook then passes back to Digimi a special key, and we keep a copy of that key in the user's personal storage area. And in fact, everything we do in that storage area is locked with a whole range of encryptions, and we actually run keys that wrap up keys. And we have a very strong security model based on all the leading banking and health application sets. So we've now created the ability to add one data source, and you can in fact repeat that to add Twitter, multiple health service providers around the world, and also various banking and financial service providers. So what we've now created is a basic architecture where all of these data owners, they own the user's data, have actually made it available to them. And one of the functions that we run in our cloud next is a synchronization function, which takes user's keys, runs them in a protected area that we as a business can't see and touch, and it now goes to each of these sources and says, this user's approved us to fetch their data. Please, can we have it? And we take all the data from these different places and we put it in this storage. And the way we do it is we actually store and categorize it. So for instance, whenever we store social data, we categorize it. And if we put Facebook in, we note Facebook. If we store Instagram, we separate that. And so on, if we were to add finance data and we add bank one, or we add any other sources, all of that data is stored in the user's storage. Now what's very interesting is that we've now moved the user data to their own storage and their app directly talks that data. So this cloud is not doing anything under normal usage. Its only purpose is to provide access to the user's data to move it to their storage when requested. And in later videos, we'll explain how the app can then control separate cloud functions to share the user's data when they approve it under what's known as consent access. But what we'd like to establish here is the three core principles. That the user, when they see their data, is running our app on their phone, so they're in control. 
The data that they see and they manage on their app is from their own personal storage. So from a GDPR and a general regulation uh, perspective, it's very important to demonstrate that the user now owns their data and is in control of it. And all that DigiMe is doing within its cloud service is providing a proxy processing function for that user. And as I said, this environment actually may actually store logging records to say that the service is functioning and it is successful or failing. But at no point do we store any records that give any personal information or record anything about users' data. So our entire cloud solution itself is GDPR compliant. Now this is a very high level view, but it's a basic story about how the architecture works and about some of the rules and principles that we've invoked. In later videos, we show you what's happening underneath this layer and we show you how the sharing service works as well. So I hope that was a useful initial introduction and please enjoy our other videos as well. Thank you.